is an independently made post-apocalyptic road movie that focuses on two former baseball players, Ben and Mickey, as they try to survive in a world plagued by the living dead, as well as each other. The two of them travel across the back roads of Connecticut in order to avoid most of the zombies currently swarming around the place. And this particular zombie drama indeed focuses less on the shuffling deadheads themselves and more on the relationship between the two men who have different ways of coping with the end of the world. Mickey tries to tune out his current situation by retreating into his headphones to listen to music, a bad habit that Ben believes will get them both killed. Mickey dreams of things going back to the way they once were, and upon hearing a female voice on his walkie-talkie, decides that he wants nothing more than to try and find her. Of course, it's possible that he has... other reasons. Some would even say urges to find this woman judging by one awkward scene involving a busty female zombie. Mind you, the fact that the zombie chick gets her head blown apart by Ben, whilst Mickey was, well, stroking his, was probably a bit off-putting. Mickey also refuses to kill, which becomes a task, and an ongoing bone of contention, that falls to Ben, who has seemingly embraced the increasingly feral and lawless lifestyle of being a zombie slaying Bear Grylls. You certainly get the impression that he and Mickey have been out there, surviving for quite a while. Ben has saved Mickey's life on more than one occasion, and it's almost like he has to act as a surrogate father to him at times. If this was a father and a young son trying to survive against the zombies, then this could be excused. But the fact that these are two grown men makes it all the more difficult for them. Although there are some moments where it plays out like a bad soap opera, like The Walking Dead has had a tendency to do recently, and that there's very little gore and action throughout, the emotionally charged atmosphere throughout the film is definitely the stuff of horror, in particular during the film's third act, where the lad's Volvo station wagon becomes their own mini-prison. So despite its low budget, or perhaps because of it, the battery is an emotional roller coaster that's simply a must-see. It might be a little slow in places, but the battery shows that you don't need a big budget and good-looking Hollywood stars, World War Z, in order to tell a compelling story. In fact, it does tell you about what happens about to those people who do survive the apocalypse. Here, it's not the zombies, but a lack of purpose that's the real killer here.